Getaways. On today's show, we're going to start in the quaint harbor town of Manistique, Michigan. Located in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, right where the Manistique River flows into northern Lake Michigan. It's a great little town to bring the family up to. One of the things we're going to be looking at is this boardwalk that runs uh, virtually right along the beach through town here. A great spot to come down here in the morning, the evening, any time of the day to take a little hike and enjoy this beautiful scenery. We're also going to take you out and do a little bit of canoeing on the Manistique River. That runs right through the Sini National Wildlife Refuge, so it's a good little canoe trip. Also going to look at some of the hiking trails. There's a lot of nice sites up here, something you can bring the whole family into, or just a great place to get away, a northern experience you won't forget. Let's get started. Stretching from Lake Michigan's North Shore to within five miles of Lake Superior, Schoolcraft County has a little bit of everything the UP has to offer. Wild rivers and pristine lakes, deep forests and a plenitude of wildlife combine to make it a sportsman's paradise. The downtown is exactly what you would expect of a town located in the heart of the Upper Peninsula to be. With most of the buildings dating back to the early 1900s, it maintains the charm of a town from another era. People are friendly and crime is almost non-existent. The only real town in Schoolcraft County is Manistique. It's a place that's almost hidden from the rest of the state, with the nearest town of any size being almost 50 miles away. Surrounded by the Hiawatha National Forest on one side, the 90,000-acre scenic wildlife refuge on the east side, and the shoreline of Lake Michigan on its south, there isn't another town in the Midwest that allows an escape to Mother Nature's majestic beauty like Manistique. Native Indian tribes populated this area well before the first European exploration in the late 1600s. The name Manistique itself is derived from the original Indian word describing the reddish-brown color of the river which runs through the town. It was time to explore and enjoy some of the rugged beauty that this area has to offer. We would meet Al Nakowitz. Al's the owner of the Econo Lodge in town and would join us for a canoe trip down the Manistique and through the Sini National Wildlife Refuge. He would bring along his son Alex and daughter Shelby, both who would experience canoeing for the first time in their young lives. Northland Outfitters, located in Germfast, Michigan, provides outfitting services for canoeing and biking trips throughout the area, and owner Tom Kenny would be our guide for this fantastic trip. I was excited and couldn't wait to get started. But it's really easy to control. You can almost drift this kind of a river. That's what makes it nice for the families, because you don't have to work hard. You can come out here and almost just steer and just coast down the river. So it's a really nice canoe trip down here, and, it's a, and you're getting into a wild area, so there's a good chance of seeing some wildlife as you're out here. That's what we're hoping for anyway. As we pedaled further down the river, you could see the excitement on the kids' faces and a little bit of fear on Alex's face, but that would soon be gone as he became more comfortable with his surroundings. He was a trooper and by the time the day was done would be asking when he could come back and do it all again. On the other hand, Shelby was the ever alert one who would spot a downed tree or a blue heron taking flight. As we paddled down this river, I couldn't help but be in awe of the splendor of Mother Nature. There were towering pines as far as the eye could see, and the only noise you would hear is the paddle dipping into the water or the cry of a lonely loon. I treasure these moments knowing they will come to an end all so soon. If you would like more information on this trip and the Sini National Wildlife Refuge, you can get it at our website at greggetaways.tv. At the end of today's show, we'll also tell you how you can get a free DVD of the Mystique in Manistique. As the day came to an end, we still had a lot of energy from the excitement of the day and decided to enjoy a little of Manistique's nightlife. Don't laugh, there really is a nightlife here. Located right on US-2, just as you arrive in Manistique, is the Kuwaitan Casino. This upscale entertainment is almost a surprise in an area located in this part of almost a wilderness. Owned and operated by the Sioux Tribe of the Chippewa Indians and located on Indian Reservation, it has all the gaming that you would find in a Las Vegas casino. We spent a minute with marketing coordinator Becky Dennis, who gave us some insight into the Manistique Kuwaitan Casino. I took a few minutes to play a few of the games under the strict supervision of the Kuwaitan staff. How did I do? Well, you've heard the commercial, What Happens in Vegas Stays in Vegas? Same holds true here. With the kids all rested and ready to go, we started our day at Indian Lake State Park. This is one of the most beautiful state parks in Michigan State Park system, and that's saying a lot with the beauty Michigan offers. It has a trail system that wraps around part of Indian Lake and is suitable for all ages and is handicap accessible for part of it. 
Today brings us over to Indian Lake State Park where we're going to be going out on one of the trail systems over here. This is a real nice state park that they have here and uh, it just happens to have a, a great little trail that runs down along the lake itself and then back into the woods a little bit. At least part of this trail now is an interpretive trail which means that as we go along we'll see signs something like we've got over here. Uh, they will also have uh, something about uh, maybe the type of uh, trees that are growing there, the type of plants that are growing there. Kind of tells you a little bit about the area that, that you're in. As we get further back in though, we'll get deeper into the woods and we won't see so much of that. It's just kind of pretty and a nice little walk through there. So we've got the gang out here with us again today. We're going to yeah, have some fun. I and dogs. Do like it. Another one? <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and get going. <laughs> picnic table down here? Yeah. This is all handicap accessible right here. Now what we did, we made a loop around. We didn't take the whole trail. There's a section of it that goes way out into the woods, but we we came down on the beach and we are now coming in behind the picnic area. You can see a pavilion probably in behind me right now. That's one of the pavilions that they have here at the park. It's a beautiful, beautiful park. Just down the way here is the, are the campsites themselves. Uh, between the two sections of the park, there's well over 200 campsites here. It wasn't long before the trail took us right by a pavilion that anyone can use for a big group or small, and there's no charge. It's a beautiful log building with giant fireplaces and picnic tables inside, along with horseshoe pits, a playground, and volleyball nets, and the best part, it's located right on the water. Well, it may be a little bit hard to believe, but these are the, these are the pavilions that are here at Indian Lake State Park, and these are some of the nicest I've ever been in. There's actually the there's the rock walls, we've got a beautiful rock fireplace, a nice roof over your head. These are sturdy buildings, glass windows, uh, there's, there's bathrooms at either end, so you can come in here with a group of people. You can have a fire, you can have a family reunion, you can have a church get together. Anything you want to do, you can come out here. Uh, there's nice grills outside, great place to come out to and have some fun. This was in the woods and I found it. And what do you think that is? Is that a pine cone? Maybe a pine cone or other stuff. A lot of, a lot of neat stuff there in the woods though, isn't mm -hmm. there? You can walk along and pick up uh, pine cones and twigs. Yeah, and, and, and you, can, you can collect you these. Talk. It's very valuable. Well, we're now at the end of our hike. Uh, we've just made, like I said, that one little loop, uh, this last part that you see in the pavilions, the horseshoes, the uh, places, the grills and the picnic tables and so forth. That's all a day use area here. You don't have to be a camper to use it. You can come in during the day at any time just with a state park sticker, pick up a daily sticker and you can come in here and use the park. There's a nice beach out here, by the way, too. As a matter of fact, we're going to walk over there right now. There's a spot to sit down and we're just going to kind of look out at the water and enjoy this just a little bit longer before we take off. One last picture before we end our hike here at the Indian Lake State Park, and then it's on to another destination. There's so much to do here that when Manistique decided to build a new website, we asked if we could do it for them. We wanted the opportunity to research and put together a site that would benefit people like us as well as the casual observer. We wanted something that would not only have the basic information, but information that would help you plan every detail of your trip, and that's exactly what we did. When Denny Bryan and myself sat down to do this, we knew it had to be graphically entertaining and full of information. Whether you need a hiking map or want to see what the area looks like, it's here. We've taken video and pictures from our show and combined all our personal experiences to make what I think you'll find is the most comprehensive website on the internet. There's a link from our site. Check it out and see what you think.
slowly comes to an end, we wanted to spend it on one of the most beautiful boardwalks around. The Manistique Boardwalk runs right next to Lake Michigan and its beautiful sand beach. The water sparkles like a million stars at night as you take this walk. Well, as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of people that are out here already enjoying this boardwalk. Why don't we head on over and enjoy it ourselves? It's a great little spot right here. As you can see, we've got uh, the beach out here. We've got all these grasses growing. You get a pretty good idea of what the environment along the shoreline looks like. And of course, we've got all kinds of people that are walking around and just having a good time out here with their families. Great place to bring the kids. How's it going? Yeah, it sure is. We're going to take you on down just a little bit further right now and show you what more of the shoreline looks like and uh, learn a little bit more about this area. The boardwalk was first constructed in 1991 with several expansions and improvements taking place since. Well, we couldn't ask for a more gorgeous day out here along Lake Michigan. There's just a slight breeze blowing, but the water's pretty calm and it's just constantly changing in the sunlight. Just a gorgeous place to be. Now you can see down behind me, you see some buildings, that's Trader's Point, and there's a, a nice little deli that's down in there. You can go down there for a little snack. It sits right on the marina. There's also a little ice cream shop down there. Just some little stores that are in there. Just a great little spot to visit when you're out here. Now down behind me, just a ways down the boardwalk here, there's also a picnic area that you can actually drive to. And as a matter of fact, there's quite a few spots that you can drive off of US 2 and pull down and park. But that particular one has a uh, picnic area that you can go into and a little well there if you want to get some water. So come on out and enjoy this. It's just beautiful and there's really not very many people out here today. The Manistique Boardwalk and Riverwalk extends almost two miles from the eastern city limits, passing under the US-2 bridge into the downtown district. The boardwalk offers interpretive signs, a fishing pier, picnic areas, and access to the East Breakwater Light. There's an abundant supply of birds and other wildlife for you to enjoy. Just like we said, this is a great spot. As you can see out behind me here to the side, there's a beautiful beach that you can bring your kids out to. They can do a little swimming out here. Just out over this way, we've got the lighthouse. There's actually a pier that runs out there. Uh, I see people walking out there, but you do have to use a lot of caution if you go out there. On a windy day, it can be dangerous, so be careful there. But uh, you can come out here and just uh, wander around. There's some benches around that you can sit on and just enjoy yourself and enjoy this beautiful scenery. It comes right to the edge of the breakwater for the East Breakwater Light. The light is at the east end of the harbor where the Manistique River flows into Lake Michigan. On a day like today, you can walk out on the breakwater all the way to the light. But on days when Lake Michigan gets rough, it's not advisable to walk out to the light because more than likely you'll end up in the water, swept off the walk by large waves and wind. The East Breakwater Light was first lit in 1917 and automated in 1969. The 35-foot red light tower is shaped like a square pyramid and may be seen from almost everywhere along the beach. The original light was a fourth-order Fresnel lens, now replaced with a 300mm automatic beam. There are only a handful of motels in town, so if you're planning a trip to the Manistique area, you'll probably want to make early reservations for the busy times of year. Our host, Pat and Harley Cott, owners of the Budget Host Inn on US2, are just a great example of the friendly people in this town, and we want to thank them personally for their wonderful hospitality. We'd like to send you a free DVD of today's show. All you have to do is go to our website at greatgetaways.tv and fill out the form and tell us what you thought about the mystique of Manistique, and we'll get one out to you just as quick as we can. getaways. Well, it's autumn in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, and on today's show, we're going to take you on a fall color tour. 
we're going to base ourselves in Manistique on the north shores of Lake Michigan. From there, we're going to be traveling mainly north into the hundreds of thousands of acres of federal and state forest lands. We'll take meandering roads, we'll go past scenic rivers, we'll hike around wilderness lakes, and maybe we'll even get the canoe out. But whether we're back in the woods or out traveling the main roads, you're going to get a color tour that you'll never forget. Our trip starts in Manistique and continues throughout Schoolcraft County. Being so centrally located to all the adventures we take in this wilderness we so respectfully call the UP, Manistique gives us the perfect home base for our adventures and travels across the Upper Peninsula and Schoolcraft County. Our fantastic fall color tour will take us to some of the most beautiful areas the North Country has to offer. From the Mirror of Heaven, the Rainy Nature Preserve, canoeing the rivers and hiking the pathways and discovering the long lost trails, it's all here when we take you on the world's greatest color tour. It's not surprising that so much wilderness and beauty is located here. Schoolcraft County is geographically one of the largest counties in Michigan, but has one of the least amounts of people living in it, averaging less than seven people per square mile which means you won't ever be crowded when you take this color tour. So come on along as we take you on one of the world's most beautiful color tours. As we begin what has to be one of the most amazing color tours that we've ever taken, we immediately discover even the highway is greeting us with a brush of the vibrant colors that can only be experienced up north. Traveling down US 2 as it runs along Lake Michigan, it welcomes us to begin our fall adventure. Well, we'll start in a place that's really special to us, a mystical place that always seems to guide us in the right direction. For longer than I'd like to admit, I've been coming to the Big Springs, or as the Native Americans call it, Kitchitakippi, the Mirror of Heaven. It's located in Palms Book State Park. We're with Jeff Hewitt right now. Jeff is a lifelong resident here in Manistique, and he said that he would give us a few tips on some of the good places to go as we're out here on our color tour. Now, Jeff, you brought us over to Kitchen Kippy, also known as the Big Springs, which is a, a beautiful little area, and I see that uh, they even have a concession back in here of some yep, kind. Huh? Yep, they have all kinds of uh, goodies and uh, knickknacks, and we could go in and get an ice cream and go for a little tour. Okay, we'll go down then to the Big Springs itself, which is just over here, yep. and it's just a great place to be at any time of the year, but this time it's a little bit more solemn, a little bit quieter, colors are nice, and uh, we're going to go down and take a look and see what it looks like right after we get an ice cream. What do you gotcha. think we're going to get one? Jeff is a lifelong resident of the UP and would spend part of our trip guiding us to areas that only the natives would know. And I will tell you right now, you will not be disappointed. As a matter of fact, if you want to discover some of these areas, you'll be one of only a few that know they exist, and the only way you can find them is by watching this show and then going to our website for maps and guides. Just before you get to the springs, in a little clearing in the woods, is a sign that tells the prayer in the woods and ends with, Ye who pass me by, harm me not. It's a prayer that has stuck with me through many an outing. At the springs you are greeted by a new, more modern raft that has replaced the older, smaller raft that had served the springs for almost 60 years. Called one of Michigan's most alluring natural sites, it is 200 feet across and is 40 feet deep. Kitchitakippi is Michigan's largest freshwater spring with over 10,000 gallons a minute gushing from the fissures in the underlying limestone. The flow continues throughout the year at a constant 45 degrees Fahrenheit. By means of a self-operated observation raft, visitors are guided to vantage points overlooking the fascinating underwater features and fantasies. Ancient tree trunks, lime encrusted branches, and fat trout appear suspended in nothingness as they slip through the crystal waters far below. Clouds of sand kept in constant motion by gushing water creates ever-changing shapes and forms, a challenge to the imagination of young and old alike. Well, it looks like at some time in the not too distant past, there was a really big storm that came through here because as you look around through this whole area, you can see trees that are just have fallen over. A lot of them have caught on other trees and not gone all the way to the ground, but there is a bunch of them out here. If you like a new adventure and uncovering the past, this has to be at the top of your list. The environmental lab is one of those places we talked about earlier in the show that the only place you'll find information about it is at our website. It was not even known by most local residents that we talked to. 
If you enjoyed today's show, we've put together a travel planner on our website at greatgetaways.tv. It gives you all the information you need to have a fall great getaway to remember. Here's what it contains. You'll find a video clip of each destination from today's show with a map and directions to each stop. It will tell you how much time to allow for each adventure, even what you should take with you. We have links to other hiking and travel maps along with links for accommodations, restaurants, outfitters, and even more attractions than we visited today. Just go to greatgetaways.tv and follow the links from our homepage. We would like to send you a free DVD of today's show. All you have to do is go to our website and fill out the form and tell us what you thought about our Upper Peninsula Fall Travel Planner and we'll get one out to you just as soon as we can. If you'd like to tell us some places that you'd like to see us go on future editions, add that to your comments. If you don't use the internet, you can call the number on your screen for a free guide to the area. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week on another great getaway.